Welcome to She Lancer, Mom Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Angela Olfest, otherwise known as VoiceOver Angela. In this podcast, we talk about my adventures in freelancing, my voiceover business, and everything else in between. Let's get started. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Today is July 4th, Independence Day. Happy Independence Day. Um, thank you for joining me again for another live Q&A session. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some tips and tricks and techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business, and I answer your questions in these live Q&A sessions, which have turned again into more of a community kind of meeting, which is fabulous. I love it. And I hope you do too. Um, if you're not new here, then you know every week we have a poll. And um, I don't know if we'll have many people here today, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm still, I, my word is my bond. If I'm going to say I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here. <laughs> we'll do this every week regardless. Um, okay, so this week, buttons, buttons, who's got the button, right? Okay, so this week's poll is what is your biggest obstacle in voiceover? And I'm asking this question because, again, I'm seeing these sorts of questions a lot. What do I do if I don't have this? What do I do if I can't overcome this? What if I have this? What do I do? Right? And I think it, it, it comes down to figuring out what the obstacle is, right? And figuring it out. Because I think a lot of us come across a lot of these obstacles. And a lot of them are very common. Like we all experience these obstacles at one time or another. So again, this is where another, this is another uh, opportunity to join a community and to reach out and ask for help and opinions and advice and how to overcome these things. Because the poll questions, right? The options for the poll were, you know, my biggest obstacle is, you know, the technical aspects. I have a noisy room. I can't quite seem to get my noise floor under control or the noise, the ambient noise in my room under control. I have a hectic schedule. I have no time. I have no time to dedicate to voiceover audiobooks. The learning and the training is another obstacle because I don't have the capital or the funds to purchase training or courses or I don't have the time to learn, right? Or finding work. And then if you find work, getting paid for that work. These are all things that we think we've all experienced at some point or another throughout this journey. And there are ways to compromise, some ways to learn, to figure out what works best for you and your situation. I know I've been in all of these, all of these, all of these obstacles I have come across myself. And it's just a matter of finding the best way that works for you, right? Maybe if you have a technical issue or a noisy room, you know, reach out to someone who is astute with audio, you know, an audio engineer and figure out what you can do with your room and maybe particular plugins or effects or how to properly set your equalizer to um, address the noise in your room. You have a hectic schedule, no time, right? The biggest thing for me in that respect was to get an agenda book right? An old school daily planner that had the month in it and had days like sections for the day. And I would write down what was a priority for that day. If I had a meeting with a client or a mentee or, a, you know, whatever it was, or if I had this project due and I had, or this audio book, I had to get two chapters done this day. I'd write it down on each day. And that way I could stay on top of these things. Learning and training that comes with time sometimes. Sometimes in, in the beginning, we don't have a whole lot of money, to get coaching or, you know, those kinds of things. So that kind of goes back to the ready, aim, fire thing, right? You're ready enough, fire, you know, just do the thing and then revise and refine as you go along. And then once you start to have money coming in, then get the training and support, um, not support, but get the training and the coaching that you may need, Right. The finding work and getting paid, again, comes with time. There are many, many, many places to find work and not just platforms, 
right? Like pay to plays and things like that. But stepping outside of that box even and finding work uh, through LinkedIn, through social media platforms, right? For when you get into direct marketing, finding the casting directors, finding the right people in the right companies that you can reach out to and hopefully start building a relationship with. All of these things I have come across myself, right? So tangent one. So all of that to say, what is your biggest obstacle? So we can help you overcome that today because I want you guys to keep moving forward. I don't want you to get stuck in this place where you're, I can't move forward. I can't do this because I'm stuck here. So let's figure it out. What is your biggest obstacle? 10% of you said technical noisy room. And that actually surprises me because I know that was a big issue for me. And it's a, it's an issue for most people, I think in the beginning, right? 40% of you, a good chunk said hectic schedule, no time. That I completely understand. The learning and the training, 25% of you said is your biggest obstacle. And then 25% of you said uh, finding work and getting paid. So all of these are completely relatable. So let's go to the comments and see if we can help you guys figure out possibly what to do and to help you overcome, at least give you some sort of, maybe we can spark an idea or some way to help you move past it so you can keep moving forward. So let's hop over to the comments. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's see who's first in. Scary stories to sleep by. How you doing? Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, Allie Goss is here. Good morning, Allie. Hi, Angela. I'm so excited for this. I hope your July 4th is going well. So far, so good. I'll tell you another thing. Holiday noise. <laughs> I don't think we've ever really realized how much noise people make in the days even leading up to holidays like today where there's going to be fireworks and lots of noise and smoke and barbecues and music and, you know, tonight, right? But also last night and the night before. I think as soon as fireworks become available for purchase, people go out and buy them and then they just start shooting them off at night. I mean, tonight it's going to be, you know, the pinnacle of this. But so what do you do? I've learned that in the days leading up to a holiday where there's going to be barbecues and music and people and, you know, visitors from out of town and just lots of, you know, goings on outside and you can't really record because of all of that noise, you you're going to have to try to get as much done as you can in the days before, you know, leading into a holiday, especially Independence Day or, you know, any other holiday where fireworks or loud booms are involved, right? So far, so good. Everybody's quiet right now, but last night the fireworks were crazy. Uh, Maria's here, Maria Vida, Maria, Maria Vida. My tongue is wanting to blah, blah, blah. If you have no experience, what do you write when applying for a gig? Um, when you have no experience, what do you write when a, for applying? You mean like uh, when you're submitting an audition? The audition pretty much speaks for itself. Your performance, the audio file itself pretty much speaks for itself. I do always say to include a personal note when you're submitting an audition because it shows that you are paying attention when you use their name and maybe even address a question or a concern or a spec or something that they've indicated that could be uh, important to the audition in and of itself. You could include in that message your turnaround time, maybe why you would be the right fit for it. It's important to include these things. I think that they're important, but nothing speaks louder than the audition itself, right? Your performance. Did you understand the tone? Did you understand the audience? Did you understand who you were as the narrator, right? The sound of your room, the audio quality, that in and of itself is going to be the loudest, you know, seller for you is the audition itself. Um, if you're referring to uh, like the profiles, if you're setting up profiles and pay to plays and you're asked to write a bio for these places. So what do you write? If you're just starting out, you can't say, you know, I've voiced all these commercials. I've done all these audiobooks, I've done all this stuff because you haven't yet. Those profile bios are best suited anyway for you to describe who you are as a person. 
maybe your life experiences. For example, my profile bio says that, you know, it sort of describes my voice. I have sort of a, a deeper register, but um, a, a neutral accent, kind of a neutral West Coast or, you know, American accent. Um, I've got, you know, 20 plus years in the automotive industry. I've been in construction. I'm a world traveler. I'm an artist. You know, all of these things about yourself. You don't really need to focus on what you've done if you haven't done anything yet. Focus on maybe what you sound like. What kind of equipment do you have, right? Talk about you, your life experiences. You'd be surprised at how many clients actually will want to connect with you based on something you have in common or something that maybe you understand. If you've been a medical assistant for 20 something years or whatever it was, and you understand the lingo, you understand the jargon, you understand the processes, you would might be a better fit to narrate something with a, a medical, you know, uh, with a medical intent, better than someone else who doesn't, right? You never know. So use what you already have, use your life experiences in your profile bio, if that's what you're referring to. Tangent number two. Your favorite, to, your favorite today and every day. Happy Independence Day from Toledo, Ohio. Yes, happy Independence Day. I wish I had a like a firework graphic or something. I need to get my stream deck up and running again. Caesar, spicy Caesar. Hi, Angela. Now that I've pretty much settled all the technical bits, I'm fretting over the performance bits like EQ, sibilance, diaphragmatic breathing, and mouth noise. I'm incredibly pedantic. Same. But I think that was also one of the hardest things for me was to let all of that stuff go. Right? You naturally, inherently get better with all of these things over time. Um, as you practice doing them, right? Not so much the sibilance and mouth noise. That's just... I guess, depending on how bad your sibilance is, your sibilance might not even be as bad as you think it is, or even your mouth noise for that matter. But there are plugins, as we know, that will help reduce mouth noise. The one from Isotope, the mouth declick in the standard and advanced packages is my absolute favorite and go-to because I have uh, apparently a very sticky mouth. <laughs> Lots of mouth noise. At least in my head, I do. And I'm pretty sibilant. I've got this, you know, feed cracker there that makes me a little bit sibilant. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, to teach yourself to speak a little less sibilant, maybe hold your teeth a little further apart when you speak, or you could just use some effects to help reduce some of the sibilance. But just know that as you're recording, everything that you think may be an issue is either A, a non-issue, or B, could be fixed in post. Or maybe a little bit of both. I think most of the time we ruminate over things that are a non-issue to begin with. We just think that they are. So, but the EQ will definitely come with time. I think um, we should probably do something like that in the group and how to, but it doesn't really help when everybody has a different DAW, right? There are a lot of great videos on YouTube. Mike Russell, I think I've mentioned him to you guys before. Mike Russell has a channel here on YouTube, and he goes through a lot of different uh, aspects of Adobe Audition and Audacity, and I want to say even Reaper, but I'm not 100% sure. So depending on which DAW you have, he could be a, a goldmine of information in those respects for you, Caesar. Um, uh, what's the next comment? A happy, happy fourth, ma'am. Don't think we'll have many here though. This is Jim Franks. Yeah, that's okay. We're here. I figured, um, you know, it was a four day weekend for a lot of people and they're probably out of town and that's fine. You know, I'm kind of jealous, <laughs> but that we're here and that's all that matters right now. Right? That's right. Rustic Hillbilly morning and happy independence day to you. Um, what's the weather like in Oregon today? Caesar says also happy 4th of July. Despite not being stateside right now, I've decided to take it easy and put my feet up today. Good for you, Caesar. I don't have fireworks, but I do have a malfunctioning air fryer. So that counts. I don't know if that counts unless it's sparking and stuff. And that's in lieu of fireworks. <laughs> I want an air fryer. How do you like your air fryer? I'm debating on getting one. I kind of want one. 
Uh, Dylan Holt says, good morning, all. Taking a break from my padded room. <laughs> That's one of my uh, favorite t-shirts in my shop is I get paid. Oh, God, I'm having a, a brain fart now. I get paid to sit in a padded room and talk to myself all day. Something something to that effect. I, I need more coffee, but that's one of my favorites. It's funny. Uh, Facebook user says, I'm here too, Jim Franks. This is Roy Roy B. Hey, Roy. Uh, only the elite. That's true. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here. I love it when the community from all sides come together and just talk things out, man. You know. Uh, Caesar says Independence Day. I thought today was Codependence Day. <laughs> I had my wife do all the dishes. Oh, Caesar, Caesar, Caesar. And then uh, Jim Frank says, "LOL, definitely, sir." That's right. Evie eight six four two. Hello, Evangeline here from WV. I'm in my sponge sponge stage. <laughs> And have been so grateful for your wonderful informative videos. Thank you for so much. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Sure, I I enjoy this. I hope as much as you guys do. Uh, we meet up here every week and um, talk about you know one central topic, and then it's sort of you know I get into several tangents along the way <laughs> about other stuff. But um, that's great. Your sponge stage. Are we talking about foam, like acoustic foam in your room, which for those of you, hopefully, um, if you're just joining or this is like your first time seeing me or something, I've said it a million times, but your space is one of the most important aspects of this is getting your space dialed in, meaning take a look around your room. Anything that has, um, for me anyway, the easiest way to do this was to just look around your room and if you have any hard reflective surfaces walls, hardwood floor, your ceiling, the door to your room, anything that could possibly reflect your voice, because your voice is a vibration, and it's going to bounce around the room and into your microphone. Your microphone, keep in mind, I don't think a lot of people realize this, but your microphone picks up not just your voice, but every other sound that is audible. <laughs> so it'll pick up the echo in the room, it'll pick up, you know, the computer running in the background. It'll pick up the ceiling fan above your head, the air conditioner, you know, working. It'll pick up everything that maybe you just get used to hearing and you don't really recognize it as an issue. So trial and error, right? Play with your DAW, record some test sessions with and without dialogue and just listen to your room, listen to your voice in your room. You know, if you hear noise, if you see noise, you know, if you hear the echo, then then you know that is something that needs to be treated. Tangent number three. Dylan Holt says, with a four-year-old boy and 12-year-old girl in travel hockey, I have a combination of noisy room, four-year-old, and no time, 12-year-old. Oh, my goodness. You, I, I feel for you. That, that is a long day. And not only that, but with especially in the summertime when they're both home during the day. I don't know if you have a full-time job or not, or if you're, you're at home, but man, during the summer, that might be something where you might have to sacrifice a few hours after the kiddos go to bed to get some work done. I know I've been in that particular position. I mean, um, my kiddo is um, a little older and thankfully pretty self-sufficient at this point. He entertains himself most of the time, but um, I, you know, I still feel the mom guilt for not uh, hanging out and spending time with him. I mean, he's my whole why for even doing this in the first place, but in the end, I get to spend more time with him. So that is um, very important to me, but for you, you might have to sacrifice a few hours here or there, maybe um, quiet time, nap time. I don't know if four-year-old still takes nap, naps or not, but you might just have to really take note of what your schedule will allow you to do and sacrifice a little sleep just to get you off off the ground, you know. And then once things become more uniform for you and things start to start to pick up, maybe you start to get a little book of business and some repeat clients, then you can have them understand that mommy needs a little bit of quiet time, you know, or daddy needs a little quiet time, whichever, you know, 
give me two hours, give me a hour, you know, go watch a movie and be quiet or something. You know, I don't know how four year olds would be tough, but you know, it's going to be hard, but just know that this is a temporary, albeit probably a longer obstacle than most, but temporary and you will get past it at some point. Uh, Scary Stories to Sleep By says, good afternoon, all. I think I've made, I've big made major changes to my home studio. So it's becoming less of, a, less of an obstacle. Well, that's good. And with all of the demos you've been posting to get feedback on, I, I hope those, I hope they help. I hope they help. And it sounds like they are because you're making little subtle tweaks to your studio. Awesome. Bradford says, happy 4th. I started auditioning Friday night on ACX. I've auditioned for over 50 gigs. Got an offer yesterday from my first audiobook. Congratulations. Audition, audition, audition. Thank you, Angela, for your advice. Yes, audition, audition, audition. And it's tough when you first start out because you submit that first audition and you're just so, so timid and like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what if I get it? What do I keep auditioning? Do I wait for feedback? Don't sit and just wait for the rights holder to get back to you. Just keep auditioning. Find, give yourself a goal every day if you have to, you know, at least one, maybe five, whatever your goal number is for the day or for the week or for the month, but keep auditioning. It's a numbers game. It's just like any other sales business, right? You're going to see, you're going to see a return on your audition investment just like you would with, you know, sales and marketing. You're not going to get every single job that you submit an audition for. Not necessarily because of your audio quality or your performance ability. It could be just, you're just not the voice that they were thinking of in their head when they wrote the book, right? If we're talking about audiobooks. Or for voiceover, you're just not the voice that they were looking for. And they maybe they couldn't quite articulate in the specs or the audition description of what it is that they needed. And maybe they heard a voice that wasn't anything like what they had asked for and thought that maybe that was better suited. We just never know. So audition, 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 because you might see 10% or less return on the time you spend auditioning, right? You're only going to see 10% or less of the jobs, one, based on, you know, the number of auditions that you've done. So audition, audition, audition. And if you do, if your fear is that you're going to get more than one job, if it's audiobooks, because they take time. If you're thinking, oh God, well, what if I get two or three book offers? How do I schedule those? Back to back to back, right? Just be upfront with those and transparent with those rights holders and say, hey, I've got one other one or two other ones in queue. I'll be able to start on this day. If that works for you and your timeline, fabulous, then let's get started right? Let's go ahead and accept this contract, make sure that the dates are correct, right? For the for the first 15 minutes and then the completion date. So it fits in line with your schedule and all the other books that you have. But don't let that thought stop you from continuing to audition, 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 audition. Tangent number four or five now. <laughs> Caesar says, hi, Evangeline. That's wonderful. I'm on my squeeze stage where I take the sponge and rub it all up squeeze squeezer now you're squeezer <laughs> i may have misunderstood your analogy yes squeezer kelsey v says how does payment for acx work if you are doing a royalty share book then acx will collect all the royalties on the sales that you've made from the previous month and then release those to you every month if we're talking about per finished hour you need to invoice the rights holder and I highly recommend that you um, negotiate up front with the rights holder so that they know up front that you take 50% up front. So collect 50% up front of that per finished hour rate. And then the remaining 50% is due when the book is complete. But you are responsible for invoicing the client. So if you don't have a way to invoice a client yet, I recommend QuickBooks. Um, there's uh, PayPal Business. There's... Um, Oh, gosh, is it wave or waves? I think it's wave. There's a few different ways that you can um, platforms where you can collect money and invoice. But I use I use PayPal business and QuickBooks for those. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Mark Samuel says, happy fourth, happy fourth. I have studio, I have studio done. Good. Working on demos for Fiverr. Good job. With the latest bad weather, it's been a challenge with the cleanup. Oh, yes. I've heard a lot of that lately, not only from the people that I talk to, my you know, colleagues and mentees, but also in the podcasts that I'm editing. There's just thunder and lightning. And it's just crazy, crazy weather all over the place. Nuts. Kelsey V says also, hello, everybody, and Angela. Hello. <laughs> Happy fourth. I got an offer for a children's book, but the pay and deadline are kind of eh. Well, children's books, children's books, I mean, the, the majority of the children's books that I've produced have been, you know, a thousand words or less. So unless they're asking for the book to be done, you know, by lunch, <laughs> that might be a little unreasonable. But, you know, um, what is the pay, if you don't mind sharing? All right. What are you uncomfortable about? Is it, I'm assuming, the rate? the amount of the rate, you can ask for a higher rate. You don't have to take what is given. You can negotiate not only the timeline or the deadline, you can also negotiate the rate. Usually, I think even you yourself, if you're trying to get something cheaper, like say you're on Macari or something and you find something that you want, but you don't want to pay the full list price for it, you're going to offer them something a little bit less as a jumping off point and they may counter with a different rate you can do that too with job offers it's a jumping off point it's a starting point for negotiation that is what they're hoping for but you can always counter with a different rate if you want to your favorite today and every day uh, I've completed six books and five voiceover gigs and have made a total of 150 dollars over the past four months I'm getting work, but how do you make money? I have a website, a blog, Fiverr, etc. Um, being active and proactive is going to be your best bet. If what you're doing isn't currently working, then we need to revise what you're currently doing. Right? I think finding a way to direct traffic to your website with either marketing or social media posts Fiverr, you have to probably revise your gigs, change up your title or your tags or your thumbnails, make some kind of change to reset the algorithm you're currently in that apparently isn't working for you. Go sign up on other pay to plays, you know, get active, start doing some other things that might help either direct traffic to your website or change up the algorithms that you're in. That's basically sums up the whole thing, right? Change your algorithm. If what you're doing isn't working, then change it up, right? Start on, start down a new path to start drumming up some business and um, getting some traffic going to your, not only your gigs, but to your website. Um, EV8642 says, LOL, Caesar, I, I just mean absorbing all the information. Oh, okay. I get you. So you're soaking it in. I get you, sponge. Uh, that I can make it easy as possible to get started. I'm with you. Rider Dude says, still have stitches in the wrong spot in my mouth from dental work. Oh, they come out Monday. Then I need to buckle down and start recording, maybe start practicing with some LibriVox work. And yeah, yeah. And that's exactly how I started because I didn't, I was admittedly afraid of getting started on ACX and charging people for something that I wasn't comfortable in my own uh, ability yet. Right. So I went to LibriVox.org and that is a site where you can volunteer to narrate books in the public domain. So they're free audiobooks. You can narrate a or and produce a section of a book, a chapter of a book, or a book in its entirety. It's up to you. And doing that not only helped me to understand and get to the correct formatting requirements, but it also gave me confidence in knowing that I could do it. And that there and from there went forward to ACX and moving on to everything else that I'm currently doing now. So I 
I rec I can't recommend it enough. Uh, Laura Lambert says, right now I'm listening to Mother Nature's fireworks, My Mother Nature's fireworks. Much more pleasant than traditional 4th of July noisemakers. Another reason to pause and stop the mic work. Um, birds? Dogs? Both? <laughs> Thunder and lightning? Caesar says, ah, uh -huh. yes, of course. I uh, totally understood that. In that regard, I meant I have an overflowing sponge and I am now applying the sponge on my body or something like that. <laughs> That's why we call him Spicy Caesar. Sunny's here. Good morning, Sunny. Good morning, Angela. My biggest obstacle is staying focused with distractions at home. A homebody working from home is a challenge. It is. It's a completely different dynamic than I used to. Because I'm in my later 40s now. And I started this at my early 40s. So my the majority of my life, I've worked for other people, had a schedule, had a, you know, I was there at a specific time, I left a specific time, took lunch at a specific time. And then, you know, so changing up that routine was pretty difficult. It's liberating, yes. But then you go, okay, well, <sighs> what do I do now? So Again, for me, the agenda book came in handy to tell me, okay, this is what I have to do for today. And then what I started to do was then break up my work day every couple of hours. I get out of this chair every two or three hours max and go do laundry, go get or do dishes, uh, go get groceries, pick up the kiddo from school, go to Taekwondo, whatever it is, break it up and go do something. Start, you know, tossing in little things. Take a break, have lunch, go have lunch with, you know, somebody. Go take the dog for a walk. I mean, break it up every couple of hours. So that way you're still getting work done and you're still not just sitting for hours on end and enjoying being, you know, working from home by doing the other things at home that you could be doing. That makes sense. My brain just takes a walk sometimes. <laughs> Robert Malcolm says, yes, I've never really thought about background noise until I started VO. Not just holiday, also regular noise, which I would normally dismiss. Plus, now I find myself listening to VO more closely. Yes, I do that all the time now. If I'm listening to the TV, I'm listening to, um, or radio for that matter, really anything, I'm listening to how the person talking is talking, what they're saying, how they're saying it. I'm listening for rough edits and I can hear them now. It's so funny. You can hear rough edits. You can hear the mouth noise. You can hear the breath or lack of. Once you hear it and you understand these things, you can't unhear them. So it's very common that everywhere I go, I'm listening to the speaker and how they're speaking. Yes. Writer dude says, I love having an air fryer, but I've tried three. I think it is best to get one that looks like a small oven. I, I, I want one. I mean, what is, what was wrong with the other two? What did they do or not do? Oh, Caesar says, I love my air fryer. It has a, has a tiny little rotisserie in it. Oh, that's cool. I'm a very lazy cook, so I like stuffing things in an air fryer or microwave and waiting. Zero effort, all of the flavor. <sighs> okay, so it's faster than an oven, but it's there's no like greasy fry stuff either. So it's kind of a, a combination of the two, right? Kind of want to try one. Uh, EV8642 says, funnily, yes, that sponge stage two. My MacGyver husband is lining an unused shower stall in our unfinished basement with those egg crate foam mattress pads and moving blankets to start. That is cool. You would, I would think, depending on what the shower stall is made of, it's going to be very... You'd really need to treat that sucker, I think. Interesting. But that's awesome that you've got a MacGyver in the house, one, <laughs> that can do that for you. And two, that you have the space there to do it. I mean, try it and see if it works. Jim Cecil says, ta-da, I'm here. Happy 4th of July. Good to see you, Angela. I wish I could say the same, Jim. I can't see you. <laughs> but thank you for being here. I'm glad you're here. 
<clears throat> my biggest obstacle, no VO peers <clears throat> or frogs in close proximity. I need more like more like minded folks to interact with. You recharge me for the week. Thank oh, I'm glad that I could be that for you. And it's tough not having, you know, physical bodies close to you, people that you can go out to lunch with and meet with and talk to and spend some time with that human connection. I get that. It's tough. But the second best thing, Jim, is to join these communities where at least you can see somebody's face. Maybe if you can join a community where there's Zoom calls where you can see everybody's face. I know for me, what recharges me for the week is not only this this time here on YouTube with you guys and Facebook with you guys, but also with my platinum group that I meet with every Thursday night. And I get to see everybody's face, everybody laugh and interact with each other and you know, everybody just grow and just get more confident and it's, and we laugh and have a great time. I, I love that time. And that for me is, is huge for my mental state, I think, you know, because this is a very isolating and lonely business, but I'm glad I could, I could be that for you, Jim. Thank you. Scary Stories to Sleep By says, the feedback from the group has been awesome, a big help. I've been going back and listening to my old auditions and demos, and I can definitely tell a huge difference in the positive. Well, that's great. That's great. And that's why I say do that. Because you never know if you're listening to your own demos and trying to figure out, you know, if there's an issue and you just become sort of accustomed to the sound of your room or the sound of your own voice, but maybe it's grading or maybe somebody somebody else notices something that you didn't notice yourself because you're just used to it so having other people and peers listen to your demos and give you their feedback now granted not all feedback is going to be positive and that's hard to hear especially if you worked hard to fix something then maybe it's not quite all the way fixed but it's something if someone doesn't tell you about the issue then you don't know and you can't fix it so it's kind of, you know, it makes you feel very vulnerable and small doing that and say, here, listen to this thing that I spent all this time making and then pick it apart and, <laughs> and tell me what you find wrong with it. It's hard to do that. It takes courage to do that, but it's helpful in the end. So take all of the feedback and then apply what you think is appropriate to the demo and you will continue to improve, right? Uh, Laura Lambert says, there are certain red flags I look out for when choosing books to audition for on ACX. What guidelines do you use, Angela, when auditioning on ACX? Um, you know, a great tool is Audiobook Scout. That's a service where you can sign up and set filters for particular kinds of books. And it'll email you when those books become available to audition for. And it'll also tell you if there's a, something that's not lining up, like there'll be literally a little red flag on it that says, you know, maybe the word count on the book is different from what the author is saying, or maybe there's a discrepancy in the rights holder name versus the person that is posting this audition. So then you can either look into it yourself and do a little Scooby-Doo. And maybe ask questions of the author if you really want that book or just avoid it altogether. Um, I look for the main things that I look for are, is the person that I'm talking to, the person who is posting and requesting this audition, is it the same name that's on the book? You know, uh, if it is, why? Are they the publisher? Is it a pen name? Do they just own the copyrights to this book? Right? That's usually the biggest thing that I look for. And then also verifying word count. I can't tell you how many times that Something, uh, numbers have been fat fingered, you know, either um, accidentally, sometimes on purpose, sometimes, you know, to get a lower rate, you know, zeros are left out. And most of the time, I think it might be accidental, but you never know. But verifying the word count is definitely one. I never try, I never start a job unless I see the manuscript first, because I want to see what kind of content it is to make sure that I'm comfortable with it and to verify the word count. And then, of course, to see if there are any questions I have, like if there's acknowledgments or about the author or some other um, 
some other files that I'm going to ask the author, hey, do you want these included in the audiobook or leave them out? You know, but I want to be able to know all of that up front before I even start. So those are basically, basically what I look for. Um, you can do a lot of researching yourself before you submit an audition, i.e. go look at the author page on Amazon, go find the author's website. I don't know any authors that don't have a website. And if you're not sure if the person is who they say they are, you can always reach out to them on their website and just to verify. Hey, I'm looking at your title on ACX to be, you know, turned into an audiobook. And before I audition for it, I just want to make sure that this is in fact you. Because maybe something isn't driving. Something your spidey senses are tingling and you're not quite sure if something is uh, you know, amiss, then reach out to them and ask them. Because if it's not them, then I'm sure they'd want to know so they can put a stop to it, right? Caesar says um, to Evie, that's, oh, chat's fun today, isn't it? <laughs> Every day is fun with you, Caesar. Mattress toppers and moving blankets are amazing, though. That's how I started out. I now have professional acoustic panels, but those are great to start. Mm-hmm. Start with anything that you have on hand, anything from, you know, the thrift store or, you know, because we don't have a lot of money to start out. Just do do what you can. And then as you start to improve and make some money, then revise, refresh, improve. Right. I did. I don't know anybody that hasn't. Again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to sound good. Right. Um. Uh, Sunny to Caesar says, I made my own acoustic panels with hemp insulation following a YouTube tutorial. Oh, that's cool. Totally worth the effort, of course. That is cool. Awesome. Uh, interesting. I Once I actually move into a different house, I'm going to do the do, do the room completely differently, I think. And I'm going to put up panels instead of just draping blankets that was the best way to treat this little tiny room but um i'm gonna have to start watching some tutorials on a paneling making like diy paneling uh scary stories to sleep by to caesar says i just used fleece blankets comforters and thick shower curtain and a cut up foam mat bath mat to lie in my booth closet work with what you got mm hmm Caesar to Sunny says, oh, same, same, but with cellulose fiber insulation. Very fun, except when you staple your palm to the frame. No, no stapling palms. Uh, thunderstorms. Oh, yes. Yes, thunderstorms. We have, um, oh, I have a skateboarder outside. Um. <laughs> We are, we have officially entered monsoon season here in the desert. So thunderstorms, I'm sure we'll be seeing soon enough here as well. Caesar says, uh, two scary stories to sleep by. That should also work very well. I tried doing that for myself, but got very claustrophobic. So I decided to treat my entire room instead. Cost more, but needed my sanity. Yep. Do what you gotta do. Chrissy. Thanks for all the info and encouragement. You're welcome. You are welcome. You know what? Let's um, let's check the poll really quick. All right. So where do we leave off? Uh, Chrissy. Okay. Let's see if I can remember that when I get back here. So the poll again was, uh, what is your biggest obstacle in VO? We're talking about obstacles today because every option in that poll is something that I've personally gone through myself and and I'm telling you this because I don't want you to feel like, there, you know, there's no hope. I want to tell you there is hope. There is a way past whatever you're faced with. You just need to discover what is going to work best for you in your own particular unique situation. And being a part of communities and reaching out for help and saying, hey, I have this problem in your community will get you some advice and some opinions and some feedback and what possibly you could do to make it better or just give your, or just to give yourself time or maybe you just need more practice or whatever it is, right? 
But these obstacles are just that. They're just obstacles. They're speed bumps. You get past them. Sometimes, you know, some of them take more time than others. But the options were technical, noisy room. 15% of you said technical, noisy room. Been there. Hectic schedule, no time. 24%. Okay, so now the biggest one, the one with the most votes at this point, is learning and training. That just takes time. And if you have the extra couple bucks to, you know, hire a coach or get mentorship or to join a workshop like my platinum group or, you know, any, any of the other mastermind groups out there to learn and grow from, they're definitely worth it. They are an investment, but they are an investment in you and in your business. And they can do wonders for you in helping you to sort of springboard forward, you know, and maybe helping with your technical aspects or with your performance or your confidence or your sanity or your just well-being. You know, talking to other people who understand and can support you and help you through whatever it is that you're needing help getting through, right? And then 26% of you said finding work and getting paid. Mm -hmm. So I think for the getting finding work and getting paid, for me anyway, is um, trying to get back to where I was, where I left off. Every time it like it loses where I, okay, so I'm, I'm here on Caesar. Okay. So uh, finding work, be on all of the platforms that you can be on, be as present and visible as possible. You know, there are literally over a hundred different casting sites and freelance platforms that you could submit a profile to. And a lot of them will allow you to do it for free, right? You can't audition if you're free in some of these places, but you're still there and visible and present. A lot of these you have to like uh, voices.com, voice123, and some of these other just voiceover specifically, you know, casting sites, you have to be a member or being a, a paying member in order to audition. But a lot of them will allow you to have just a free profile on there where you can upload some demos and just be there, which not only helps for your SEO and your searchability online, but it also adds to your credibility. So for example, if someone, if you're also on Fiverr, if someone found you on Fiverr and they wanted to make sure that you were not a bot or a scam, but they really liked your voice and they search you and they they find your, you know, voices.com profile, they find your Bidalgo profile, they find you on Upwork, they, it solidifies you as legitimate, as a legitimate voice actor. And they go, okay, I feel a little bit more comfortable about this now. And then they go ahead and, and reach out to you and work with you. Um, just the other day I was on, um, um, I have my profile on as many websites as I could find that I wanted to be on. And, um, the other day, just out of nowhere, I had an order come through on voice giant and, you know, I didn't audition for anything, but you never know when that's going to happen. Right. So just get out there and get on, you know, get your name and your face and your information and your demos out there. And then for getting paid, having invoices with, you know, due dates on them and your logo on them and, you know, official business invoices and send those out and then keep on top of them. You know, if they're not paid within 30 days or 60 days and you have to, you know, get on these people and remind them, hey, this is due, this is due, this is due. It's a pain, but it's also a necessary part of business. So, you know, unless you have someone that can help you out with that, you know, Billy Club, come on, it's time, time to pay the fiddler. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Maybe I've been in a padded room for too long. <laughs> Scary stories to sleep by, to Caesar. I am very fortunate to not dislike small spaces, plus it's not too, too small. It's not too, too small, but luckily it's not too, 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 too small. Dylan says, I want to sign up for the Platinum Group. How does it work? Do you all Zoom or use a different program and are cocktails allowed? <laughs> uh, my Platinum Group is... Um, it's a membership, it's a paid membership to my website. And with that comes practice scripts that you can use, 
Um, we have, there's many challenges on there. There's the blog, there's um, resources like eBooks, planners. Um, I give you all kinds of stuff with that. Plus we also meet every Thursday night uh, as a group for, it's about two hours now. And we either do practice reads, we uh, do mock auditions, we do tutorials, we do, um, you know, giving characters voices. We do uh, wheel, the wheel of emotion is beginning to be one of my favorite things. We just um, select a script and then we have this spinning wheel and it lands on an emotion and you have to read the lines in that particular emotion, even if it's the complete opposite tone of what it's intended to be, just to sort of get you, get the creative juices flowing and to get you thinking outside the box. Because what you think is the intention of a script may not be what the customer wants. And you have to sort of step outside your comfort zone in that respect. So that is becoming fun. So anyway, long story short, that it's a lot of fun. And uh, that's basically what it is. But we meet via Zoom every Thursday night. And um, cocktails are allowed. It's a very casual and relaxed and fun environment. But we do get work done. And I think uh, the support also in that group is huge. Uh, we'd love to have you. But if you go to my website, voiceoverangela.com and go to the plans and pricing page, it's the very, it's at the very top, the platinum group. Sunny says, oh my God, an air fryer will change your life, Angela. I have a feeling it might. <laughs> I'm seeing all these like uh, stuff online of people making things in the air fryer and it's just like, oh my God, that looks amazing. I want to do that. So I might have to, I might have to get one. <laughs> Scary stories to sleep by says, Hey, Chrissy sells all the encouragement. Absolutely. Oh, we just got a super chat. Gregory. Gregory. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat, Gregory. I appreciate you. Platinum group represent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rider Dude says the oven type air fryer, as like Caesar describes, is the most versatile. Some basket types are a real pain to clean. Oh, I didn't realize there was a difference. That there was, two. I've always seen the one with the basket. So there's like an oven one, and that one's better. And with a family, you would want the capacity with an oven type. Oh, see, I didn't know that. Thank you, guys. Joy says, uh, happy 4th of July, Angela, and everyone from Southfield, Michigan. I love the fireworks, but my 16-year-old dog, not so much. Thank goodness for Thunder shirts. I'm guessing those work. I've seen those a lot. The Thunder shirts and the Thunder blankets. It's like a hug for them, right? So they feel like hidden and safe. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Watch your animals tonight. Firework night. Scary Stories to Sleep By says, luckily, I take constructive criticism pretty well. Good. Billy Stevenson has also been reaching out with some great tips. Good. Good. I'm glad you're finding some help. Um, and, you know, not everybody can take it very really well. It's hard. It's hard to put yourself out there and say, hey, break me down. <laughs> right. Pick me apart. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. It's hard to do that. But necessary, I think, to move forward. Writer Dude says, the thing to remember is that constructive criticism is there to help you. If it seems too harsh, get a second opinion. I, yeah, I agree. I think multiple opinions is good anyway. Because everybody's going to have a different perspective or advice or experience with something, right? Kathleen H. says, happy Independence Day. I've enjoyed your YouTube videos for a while now. Well, thank you. Thank you. They're wonderful. I am a native Phoenician, but moved to cooler climates. Lucky you. <laughs> I remember the scorching summers. And I'm sure they're just a fond memory, right? Uh, Caesar says, my biggest obstacle in VO is my neighbor's rooster. That's on Shanghai time and crows 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. On more than one occasion, I've considered introducing it to my <laughs> Caesar, don't do that, Caesar. That's, oh, his stomach's growling. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Joy says, hey, Angela, I'm having problems with watering eyes when I'm reading a book during recording. I stop in a sentence because I can't see the next word. My work sounds choppy when played back. You know, I've had to get glasses. They have like the blue filter in them. I'm wondering if that may help. 
Is it just when you're reading on a screen or just reading at any time? Because you might have to take more breaks, perhaps. I'm not sure, but this is definitely something that we can talk more about in uh, our group or either Discord to see if we can help you find a solution. I'm not sure uh, what what aspect could be causing it, therefore what maybe a good solution would be. That stinks. Uh, Writer Dude says uh, to Caesar, "'Tis the fate of many misbehaving roosters." Kelsey says, went and did some work regarding the children's book offer. They said a hundred for the less than five minute book. I don't think that's bad. Is it a hundred dollars per finished hour that they're offering you? So keep in mind, if that's the case, if that's the case, it's a hundred dollars, but five minutes of that hundred dollars, right? So if it's a hundred dollars per finished hour, you're only looking at five minutes of that hour. So it would be small. It would be a small amount. But if they said $100 for the whole book, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But any which way you look at it, it's still a title under your belt. It's still experience. It's still doing the thing, right? So, and it's, it's better than having to do it completely for free. It's like paid internship, right? So try to look at it that way. Gregory says, I love when we do that. What, the wheel of emotions? Or everybody's drinking and we just laugh. <laughs> I'm guessing wheel of emotions. That's That one's fun. Uh, Caesar says, writer dude, I can see it now. Neighbor knocks on my door like, have you seen my rooster? And I'm like, I don't know. Want a drumstick? Extra tasty crispy. I like the like super crunchy fried chicken. With lots of hot sauce. Scary stories to sleep by. It says, I'm definitely joining when I get my first paycheck. I start my old job back on Thursday. Cool. That's awesome. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have anybody. Um, the more input and perspectives, the better. Kelsey says, and then deadline of two days. What do you think? I, I, I mean, depending on your schedule, it would be completely doable for me. Most children's books I can get done in, you know, because the majority of them are somewhere between 300 and, you know, maybe 700 words or less. Then that's, you know, that's only just a few minutes. If you said it's a five minute book, that could, I mean, honestly take you maybe an hour, two at most, you know, if you're unsure and really take your time with it. I, I for me, that would be completely doable. Kelsey says, I, I need a thunder shirt for my everyday life. <laughs> An emotional support shirt. <laughs> That's the next t-shirt for my shop. I'm a voice artist. This is my emotional support t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. This is my thunder shirt. <laughs> Gregory says, I just got an email. Uh, Emerald French door air fryer. An, em oh, an emerald French door air fryer oven. Um, everything is um, still in plastic. <laughs> so we haven't tried it yet. Um, I'd like to know if you like it. I'm going to go look at that anyway, because emerald, I mean, you can't go wrong with emerald stuff, right? So, and it's the oven, well, not the basket one. I might have to go check that out. Thanks, Gregory. Caesar says, funny thing is I get constructive criticism from others and it's great. But when it comes to me criticizing myself, I'm very Simon Cowell from American Idol. You're pathetic. Come back next year. Yes, and that's all completely normal. We all do it. We all do it. And it's hard not to. Because we hear all of the people that we admire and look up to, right? I mean, and it's just like, how, how could I ever be anywhere close or even in the same league or realm as this person? but you're probably a lot closer than you think, right? I mean, they've probably got 10, 20 years of experience on you, right? And you have to, you have to take that in consideration, but it doesn't mean that you're bad. You're just at a different place than they are, right? And, and it's hard to get past the imposter syndrome. It is. It still visits me every day. And, I, and it's, it's a choice that you have to make to say, nope, not today, right? Just like uh, 
Arya and Game of Thrones, what did we say to death? Not today, right? Not today, imposter syndrome. Uh, let me just remind you what I've accomplished this far, imposter syndrome. I've done this, 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 and this, and I've done all of this stuff, invested all this money, got all this training, and I'm doing it regardless of what you say, right? Punch that guy in the face and just keep moving on. Mark says, really enjoy the community. Thanks, Angela. What is the name for a person wanting more information before getting started? wanting more information before getting started um a procrasta learner perhaps <laughs> i'm glad you enjoy the community um i would say learning the basics of everything is sufficient don't tell yourself that you have to have a year of training or a year of practice or a year of this or that before you get started because if you don't just do it by practicing and submitting auditions and learning what you can and can't do and how to revise and how to improve, you're not going to know where to aim unless you're doing it. You're just going to be sitting on the sidelines going, okay, well, I'm learning this and I'm learning this and I'm learning this and I'm learning this, but I'm not really mastering any of them because I'm not moving forward with any of them, right? So don't allow yourself to get stuck in that stage of procrastinating learning. You're just putting off moving forward because you need to learn something, right? Don't allow yourself to get stuck there. Joy says, Angela, my allergies are bad this year and I take Benadryl, but I don't want to sleep all day. Oh, the watering eyes are from, oh gosh. Um, have you tried a different kind? Like, I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor or anything, but there's also like Claritin and uh, Zyrtec and... You know, just uh, store brand stuff. I mean, my son has bad allergies too. So we've tried, we've tried all kinds of different stuff. Uh, try something that doesn't, you know, maybe hopefully uh, affect you as, as much. Because Benadryl does the same to me. It just knocks me right out. Gregory says the wheel of emotion. Yeah, I like the wheel of emotion. Okay, I got to get going. So let's, uh, let's get these last comments in. Caesar says uh, to Mark, what is the name for a person wanting more information? Uh, Caesar. Caesar is the name. <laughs> no, Caesar, you're further along than you're giving yourself credit for. Uh, the the Levy one. I just found your channel today. Newborn ambition forming, perhaps. Well, good for you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Uh, Ryder Dude says uh, to Caesar, we are all our own worst critic. Well, almost all of us. Thinking in particular of a Dunning-Kruger type, type of worker. It's time for more coffee, I think. Scary stories to sleep by. I don't know if you saw my message, but you can call me Chris, LOL, imposter syndrome. Um, no, I'm, I'm going straight down the line of comments. I don't think I've skipped any, but if there was something in it that maybe YouTube filtered, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, imposter syndrome is real, but I have slayed that dragon. I know who you are, but if the username is the username, then sometimes people don't want to be called out. They just want their username to be used. So that's why I stick to the, just the username. Um, unless, you know, you're in my group or something and I know you know you, but fine. I will call you Chris, <laughs> but that's good. I'm glad you slayed that dragon. Maybe that's why I have so many dragons in my room. That reminds me that uh, you can slay them. Slay that dragon. Writer dude, I think I think better to have a bit of imposter syndrome to deal with than unwarranted overconfidence that becomes in itself a barrier to progress. Well said, writer dude. Writer dude, be humble and eager to learn and you know, uh, malleable with you know feedback and critiques, but don't be arrogant and overconfident, right? A lot of people have struggles with either one of those, sometimes both. So if you can be open to feedback, I think that's very important. And then also be um, gracious and, you know, humble about where you are, honest about where you are, maybe not with other people, but with yourself and know that maybe you do need a little extra help here or there and ask for it. 
you'll find that you'll move out of that slump faster than if he didn't, you know, great point. Caesar says to Ryder Dude, oh my God, the Dunning-Kruger curve. I knew someone who had all the confidence, but had the intellectual capacity of a household blender. I guess with all my self-doubt, I must be an expert. Caesar. Kelsey says, I love this community and it feels really, and it feels really nice to have somewhere to come to every week to just belong. You know, Kelsey, that's exactly how I feel about this. This all started out with, you know, giving information and uh, sharing with you what I have learned throughout my own journey of getting to where I am. But this, um, this community that this has turned into, these weekly live Q and A's have turned into not only a jumping off point for conversation and conversation, conversation and figuring out maybe solutions to problems and maybe me offering advice on something that maybe I had just learned, so on and so forth. But the community is, I think, what's most important here. And I, I can't stress that enough. That's one of the most important aspects. And I think anybody watching this now or in the play playback later would agree with me that it's community is so important for education, for support, for just, you know, mental well-being, for sharing successes, for sharing losses, for sharing, you know, potential scams or, you know, um, for work, right? Networking. I mean, there's so much to just that human connection. It's very important. And I look forward to this every week and I feel the same way just to just belong, just to talk with other people who understand, you know, that's awesome. Thank you, Kelsey. Oh, writer dude says, of course I am quite humble. I'm the most humble person I know. <laughs> Joey says, I think the other problem is I don't blink enough. Well, why, why don't you blink enough? Joy, Gregory says that overconfident thing is what I dealt with when I started this VO journey in 2021 or picked it back up in 2021. But you know, Gregory, you are one of the most committed people I know. Example for all you watching. This guy will join our platinum group meetings, you know, at night while he's driving. And if it's his turn to read something, he doesn't say, oh, I'm driving. And I, you know, maybe I'll, you know, circle back around to me later. He'll pull over and park <laughs> and do the read. That's commitment. And I admire that in you. That's, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy. But I think that uh, just about does it for today. Um, I will be here again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel next week, Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. And until then, everybody have a fabulous Independence Day and just take the day off. Spend some time with your family. Everybody's off, right? Enjoy. Uh, I'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. If you have an extra moment, please feel free to leave a review. We'll see you next time.